Hey there YouTube, this is Franco, and today I'm going to give you a, hopefully what will be a relatively short video on CAM software, on Fusion 360, on post-processors for Mach 3, and uh, maybe this will help you get started <clears throat> using Fusion 360 to program your, your Mach 3 converted milling machines, and I guess routers or you know anything that has a you know, three-axis coordinate system. So, quick little background. Uh, over the years, I've I've had the uh, you know I've been fortunate. I've been able to use a lot of different CAM packages, and you know I can tell you, Fusion 360s. It's it's not the very best CAM package that I've seen, but it is a when you consider the the cost, the price, how easy they make it for. You know, guys working in their garage or guys, you know, uh, doing things in their basements to finally get, you know, some high end solid modeling and some, you know, high end cam features. You know, Fusion 360 is pretty amazing. In fact, um, it, you know, it may have done, uh, for CAD CAM software what, you know, like what Mach 3 did for, you know, CNC control software. So I think it's pretty cool. In the past year, for my my own uh, homebrew hobby stuff, I've been using Bobcad. I am uh, well on my way to leaving Bobcad and converting everything over to Fusion 360. So, kind of, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a weird thing because Bobcad used to be like that really awesome, you know, uh, affordable cam package and. You know, truth be told, I probably wouldn't be goofing with this stuff in my garage if it weren't for Bobcad, because when I started, Bobcad was the only option. But uh, now that Autodesk has rolled out Fusion 360, I probably will not be buying any more Bobcad products. So Bobcad's cool; it has a lot of good features, but you know, you you cannot beat what Fusion 360 does for the money. It's got this wonderful environment where it's Combined uh, your solid modeling and your, your cam work, it's all in one user interface. It's it's pretty impressive. Okay, so here we are. So if you're watching this video, you probably have a Mach 3 uh, converted milling machine or something like that. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go through all the instructions and how to use Fusion 360 and how to set it up. There are a lot of really good videos on the web um, that will give you all that information. I am going to point you to one other video, though, specifically. This guy right here, Atman. Um, and he has a video, Fusion 360 Post Processor Walkthrough. So if you are um, just getting into using Fusion 360, and if you're the type of guy or person who um, built your own milling machine, you're probably the type of person that's going to want to uh, tweak your own post processors. So this is a great video, um, Fusion 360 post processor walkthrough uh, by Atman, and there is the URL. If you if you watch that video, it's well worth the time. I I learned a lot watching it, and uh, it really helped me. So there you go. So check that video out. I am going to show you the post processor that I've edited, and I'll put a copy of it out in my Dropbox location. So let me just really quickly, I got a sample part up here. Let's, um, let's do a simulate, and I'm going to turn off the solid uh, model. Okay, so there we go. So we just have the uh, stock. And so just a little demo program, a little bit of drilling. And we can skip through that. Some more drilling. We'll skip through that. More drilling. Then some helical milling to do some really deep counter bores. Okay, we'll skip that. Then a little uh, chamfer milling. So real basic part. Nothing, nothing really super spectacular about that, but it's a a good uh, sample. So let's just go ahead and post process. And Atman will explain to you this the screen, what all these th things mean on the screen. 
I am using this uh, post processor that I modified, which I'll give you a copy of and I'm going to walk through in a minute. But let's just go ahead and post this code. Here we go. So here is the code. So this is a modified version of the generic Mach 3 mil post processor. And um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to jump on over to the post screen. And, uh, well, no, you know, I can do it here. Before I jump to the post, I'll show you what's different. So what did I do? What did I do? A um, couple of things I did. First thing I did is I changed the way that it homes the machine out. Um, instead of using G28s, I used G53s because... Uh, that works better for my conversion. So I, th I throw it into G53, and I just say 10 thou away from the, the machine zero position. That works better for my machines than uh, G28 does. Um, once you get into the tool change, my machine does not have an automatic tool changer on it, so I force a M0 after every M6. I also like to make sure that my stuff isn't going to crash when I'm <laughs> running it the first time. So after like every new tool change, after it, it does its approach move where it activates the tool length offset, I always throw out an MOO to uh, just to make sure that I'm actually what looks to be about an inch away from the, the zero uh, plane on the part. That has a block skip in front of it. So after you uh, prove out your program and you're comfortable, you can do block skip and you won't have to use those MOO or that M0 anymore if you, you know, don't want to do that. Uh, let's see, what else did I change? Um, let's see, we got the, that, you won't see any more of my changes until, let's just zip on down here to where we're doing the milling. So the other thing I changed in the post was the, the generic Mach post wants to use a P value when it's activating cutter comp. So when Mach 3, and maybe other machines too, I've never really thought about this, but uh, if you put a P here, what, it, what you do is you actually give it the radius, I believe it's the radius of the tool. You can like say P, you know, if you're using a half inch end mill, it would be P.25. It overrides all the values in the the uh, tool table in the control. I, I don't like to do that, so I've changed the post so it uses the D value. So we're using tool four. Where is there? Is, we're using tool four. So it's telling it use you know radius value four out of the tool table because I like to enter my adjustments in the the, the tool table. Okay, so that was another change. I I, I like that. I think that's the way I, I want it to be. But if you want it to switch back to P's, I can show you in the post processor just, you know, how to do that. Um, let's see, what else did we do? I think those are all the, the basic changes I made to the post. Um, oh, well, there, there are a few others. You'll notice it's outputting I's, J's, and K's. That really wasn't an edit to the post. I'll, I'll show you where to change that. But anyway, so this post is... Uh, cleaned up, or at least in my definition of cleaned up. It works for me. I like the way it works. I'm going to put a copy of this in the in a Dropbox location, and I will continue to update it as I, I work with the post and um, hopefully make improvements to it. So let's go look at the, the post processor itself. So here is the post processor, and I'm editing this in a program called Notepad++. I would highly recommend that you you get that if you're going to edit these Mach 3 post processors. The language that these posts are written in is JavaScript. So when you select JavaScript, it automatically does all this nice formatting. So you can collapse, you know, I guess these are called functions or whatever. Basically anywhere in the JavaScript language where it sees something that it can uh, collapse, it'll, it'll give you that option. So... Really nice editor, I would get it if you're going to edit these posts. 
As you're searching through this post, if you just search for the word Franco, you will find pretty much everywhere I have uh, modified this post processor because I initial everything. And you'll see this uh, forward slash forward slash, that's how you comment something in, in this uh, JavaScript language. So if you skip through, just search for everywhere it says Franco, you will uh, see everything I've either changed or added. All right, so what are maybe just a, a few pearls here in the post language? Again, I'm going to search for anywhere I've commented it. Um, right here, this is actually important. This little section here, properties, this sets all the defaults that you'll see when you post process all these settings right here. They get, they can, the default values can be set here. So that's kind of a good thing to know. These are all your variable declarations, and I'm not an expert on all of this, but if you read all the other examples in, in the post, you can sort of figure out what the format is. Ah, this is a really important one. So this is something I've added. You can debug this post. This is not in the generic posts. Um, so I, I've added this variable, var debug post. If you set that to 1, we'll do this quick. If you set that to 1, and then close your file, come back in, post again, your code will have all of the, uh, basically, each line of code, you can look and see where in the post processor it was created. Um, it'll show you each, each line. So let's see here, debug, debug. Here you go. Um, on clear cycle parameters, on parameter, on parameter, on parameter. So you have to be a little bit of a detective when you're doing this, but this will, if you're patient, this will help you edit your post processors because it will at least, it will, it will help you to determine what to search for in the post processor when you're editing it. So most post processor languages have something like this built into it. It's really handy and it wasn't, this function isn't part of the, it is not part of the generic post that comes with Fusion 360, but that command, these commands can be added to it. So I uh, was able to figure that out and added it to the post, so now you can use that. This, these posts are actually the same as HSM Works posts from Autodesk, so if, you, if you're searching on Google, search for HSM Works. Um, all right, well, I'm not going to take too much more time. This was just sort of an intro. Um, the post is available. I put it on Dropbox, and I will keep updating it as I find ways to make it better. So there you go. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video, and um, I hope it helps you get your projects done. Thanks a lot.